takes about a year of research and planning to uh, start one of these style houses and it takes about a year to build it. So actually there's two years between the completion of one doll house and starting and the completion of the next. As soon as I finished Sarah's house, I knew I had to start building one for my granddaughter Allison. And I wasn't quite sure of what architecture I wanted, but I knew it wasn't going to be either Victorian or Southern Colonial as I had already done. I looked through a lot of magazines and looked for pictures. I took pictures of homes and uh, I finally decided on an English Tudor type house. I uh, went to work immediately and this is what I came up with. Here I have the completion of Allison's house which is a combination of brick and the heavy timbers and the stucco. The uh, roof on the house has over 4,000 cedar shingles that I had to put on one at a time. It was quite a job, but I was very proud of it after I had completed it as it was so authentic in its look of an English Tudor type roof. The windows are all diamond shaped. I couldn't find any standard windows that they would sell in the dollhouse because of the size. So I had to hand make all of the windows and doors in the house with its diamond shaped glass. We have the beautiful French door in the second floor with its uh, porch and uh, we have a chimney that has a protrusion of brick at the top and the expanded brick at the bottom which is the outside of the fireplace on the inside of the room. And at the top of the chimney we have our smokestacks. The louvers on this attic was also handmade and in our downstairs entranceway we have the flagstone that was all installed one at a time. Also using the same flagstone we made little stepping stones outside of the landscape area which leads to another back porch with a flagstone and some beautiful white wrought iron furniture. Our plants are also doing very well. As we come out of the porch we go on to the lawn and we have our leisurely placed lawn furniture around the brick uh, water fountain. Now we're going to go around in the back and we're going to take a look at the inside rooms. As you can see, the entire back of the house house was left open so that we could view all of the rooms at one time. Now let's move in a little closer and we'll see what each one of these rooms has to offer. We come now in through the front door and we see a beautifully oak panel hall. The uh, staircase on the left leading upstairs and on the right we have two sliding doors that are recessed into the wall. These doors lead into our great room which we will view now. The fireplace in the rear is of brick and wood and there's a little compartment in the wood area for the wood that goes into the fireplace. Alongside the fireplace is 
very comfortable furniture and the rug you see on the floor was made by our friend Pearl Brook, as many of the other curtains, drapes, and carpets that you'll see throughout the house. Just to the left is a beautifully constructed walnut bar that I made by hand, and we have our brass rail, and as you can see, it is a fully stocked bar waiting for our guests to imbibe. Going from this room and continuing through the great room, we enter through a door that leads us to our card room and our reclining reading room. We have all our favorite books in the bookshelf and a very comfortable leather chair that is one of Summerlot's creations. And as uh, you can see, our guests have hurriedly left because they left all the cards on the table. Now let's go back through the house and we'll go to the other side and we'll see our kitchen at the opposite end of the house. As you can see, we are now in the kitchen and since the rest of the house had all the dark oak paneling as a change, we are using a light maple wood for all of our cabinets and we have a well-stocked copper tray table and a very convenient chopping block in one corner. The floor is of a vinyl tile so that we can keep our kitchen clean easily and uh, notice also the lights over the sink and over the stove. Of course we have to have Coca-Cola's since our son Murray works for the Coca-Cola company. The door in the rear leads to the dining room, which we will now view. One of the most difficult things about building a dollhouse is showing a room behind a room, as in this case we have the kitchen with the dining room behind it. In order to achieve this, I found it necessary to put a hinge in the wall so that I could open up this part of the house and show the dining room as I'm doing now. As you can see, we have a dining room with the oak furniture to match the oak paneling that is prevalent throughout the house. The uh, chandelier over the dining room table is very pretty, has a lot of crystal. The carpet on the floor is very plush and the color is coordinated with the colors of the drapes that Pearl Brook made and Pearl also made the beautiful flowered centerpiece that's on the dining room table. In the rear you can see the collection of silverware And also in the rear of the room, you notice a door that leads into the hallway so that when you come in the front hall, you can either go into this dining room or into the great room. 
also when you leave the dining room it, it is not necessary to go through the kitchen to go back through the house you can go out through this door in the rear through the hall and into the great room the wall that i showed opening also of course holds the curtains and drapes and window and when it is closed it completes the architecture of the dining room starting at the bottom of the staircase we walk up the steps until we get to the top of the second floor hallway here we face the inside of the French doors that lead out into the balcony or we can turn left and go through the hallway to either one of the bedrooms on one end or to the bathroom which is in the center of the house. Normally there would be a wall in the front of this bathroom and it would form a hallway that would lead into the master bedroom but as is the problem in showing rooms in dollhouses it was necessary to leave the wall out so we could view the bathroom. The bathroom is in a beautiful pink. We have a pink tiled floor and, and, and pink wallpaper. The porcelain fixtures have beautiful floral paintings on the porcelain. All of the towels and fixtures and the vanity table are of the pink and white pattern. In the rear wall of the bathroom we also have a octagonal diamond glassed window that gives us additional light during the day. Coming out of the bathroom we would go back into the hall and through a door that would lead us into the master bedroom. The first thing that we notice as we come into this room is the parquet floor. We have a very unusual bedroom suit in this room that is so different than any that we've used in the past. The headboard and footboard of the bed are of the serpentine construction and it has a beautiful lace bedspread. In the rear of the bedroom is a little dresser and on that dresser Allison and her brother have their framed pictures. Also on the wall on either side of the bed I found some pictures in magazines that I cut out, made a little frame around them and just mounted them on the wall which added a little decor to the room. In the rear of the bedroom is a very convenient writing table and a lamp and chair and just to the left is the sitting area. Sarah needle pointed the rug under this area and the color of the furniture and the drapes in the rear of the room are all coordinated. We have some beautiful tulip floor lamps and I want to point out the slanted roof built in that I had to make which was quite convenient for additional storage space and it also formed a window seat. We also have a very pretty chandelier in the ceiling. Now let's go back through the hall to the other side of the house and we'll view the other bedroom. 
As we come across the hall, we enter into the other bedroom on the other side of the house. Here, as you can see, we have an entirely different type of bedroom suit. And it looks as though the lady of the house has her nightgown ready for retiring. Also on the bed is a very cute little doll that's dressed in a real frilly attire. The back wall, I did the same thing. In addition to the two mirrors on either side, I found some pictures in a magazine that I just cut out and framed. The floor in this room is carpeted as opposed to all the wood floors in the rest of the house. I forgot to mention the 12 volt system in this house is also regulated by a transformer. I had to find a place to put this transformer without it being obvious to everyone. So I took advantage of the attic space and put a hinge on it. And behind this door is my transformer. As I had to do with the dining room, in order to show the other child's bedroom, it was necessary to swing open the wall. And as we open up this door, we now see the children's bedroom. It has a very beautiful baby bed and the canopy was covered with some frilly lace and the theme of this lace was carried out in the border of the windows in the room. This room is also carpeted similar to the other bedroom and the children seem to be enjoying themselves playing with their toys. Evidently they got into something awfully dirty because I noticed that one of the children has a lot of smudge on the cheek. Directly under the window on the right is a toy chest that's full of toys and a bunny bear is guarding the toys. The youth bed in the rear is also very pretty. All of the pictures on the wall were needle pointed by Sarah. And as we look to the rear of the room, you can see a door that leads into the hall. The door that I swung open also has the same wall that swings open as the dining room, but when it is closed, it makes a completed room. Now we're getting the last overlook of the view of the rear of the house of Allison's beautiful English Tudor home. As we did in the past, we placed Allison's house on the lawn and it gives us a better picture of the house, makes it look like a real home.